Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your resident tinkler and metarotter, and this is the Metarot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now, thankfully, this week, much like last week, it's going to be relatively quiet in terms of new content being released. But despite this, we actually have a rather pleasant and interesting surprise. Oromo Rin is at it again with yet another installment of his legendary Seven Lucky God series, bringing us at a total of five introduced of the seven. This one in particular is probably going to be the nastiest and meanest of the bunch yet, but not just that, he is coming with friends and a couple other really nice events as well to kind of signify and celebrate his release. Being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what was announced for this week and start off with the gacha banners. Naturally, because we are getting another of the seven lucky gods, there are no other rerun banners aside from, of course, the previous four that we've had up to date. But starting, up, starting us off with the pack and spearheading us, the new model, FFJ04 Bisha Mokubera, with the kit of Sujigiri, Pile, Blow, Tank Legs, and the leg ability of Hidden. Now, right from start, B uh, Bisha Mokubera is going to be very, very powerful and equally as nasty as anyone who knows what Sujigiri does uh, already knows that this model means business the moment he sets foot on the battlefield. Behind him, we also have the reruns of the other four, which include SFJ0 Bentenzara with the kit of Force Control, Static, Microwave, Five Head Legs, and the Leg Ability of Premacy. Behind her, SFJ-01 Juronanchi, with the kit of Revive, Suction, Long Shot, Multi-Legs, and the Leg Ability of Desert-type. In addition, we also have SFJ-02 Fukoro Kuraofu, with the kit of Rebirth, Splash, Blow Away, Light Legs, and the Leg Ability of Climber. And last but not least, the most recent installment before Bisha Mokubera, is SFJ-03 Ibisu Shichifuku, with the kit of Fight Full Charge, Beam Sword, Armor Drain, Sea Legs, and the Leg Ability of Through Fight. Now before we had Bishi Mokubera, Ibisu honestly was probably the nastiest and meanest of the bunch, but I have to say the new model probably is going to rival him in terms of how nasty and how mean it can be on the field, especially right out of the box, where Ibisu may require some time to prep himself. That being said, in terms of pull priority, if you feel led to pull for any of these models, they are all very, very good. You can generally never go wrong with pulling for any of them if you want them for collection, or if they have a linchpin piece that could tie your that could tie your team together for good. In terms of order priority, I honestly would go Bishimokubera first, given that he is more readily useful right out of the box. Um, Ibisu right behind him in terms of raw damage output once full charge is in effect. And then right behind him, Ben Tensado also is very good, especially for female teams uh, with the use of Microwave on there and Premacy Leg Ability with good legs no less. Behind her, I would put uh, Fukoro Kuraofu as well for uh, for player zone for enemy zoning more than anything else. And lastly, I would put Juronanchi there at the back of the list. Not necessarily say that he's particularly bad or the worst of the bunch, but the other four just kind of have better utility overall if you choose to use any of them on the team. However, as I said, they all are very powerful models in their own right, so in the right hands they can be absolutely catastrophic, and even in rookie hands they can definitely help carry a team very easily. With Fierce Battles, we actually have a surprise that was announced uh, earlier this month, actually. And this week, we are actually getting a brand new model being introduced into Fierce Battles. And the first time in a pretty fair amount of time, no less, that we've actually gotten a brand new Fierce Battle. That new model is HNT-01 Queen Vespa, with the kit of Heater Plant, Double Static, Loat Legs, and the Leg Ability of Extra Magazine. Now, for those that aren't quite aware of what Static is, think of it like Super Fang from Pokemon, as even if it isn't capable of breaking anything by itself, it is a very good prepper move, say, if not for herself, for someone to come behind and finish the job, even if she can't break anything by herself unassisted. Behind Queen Vespa, we also have HKG0 Hawk Decker, with the kit of Triple Wave, Light Legs, and the Leg Ability of Excel. 
And then last but not least, we also have a very popular fan favorite of the community, both JP and Western Abroad. If that's SCP-0 Poison Scorpion with a kit of Triple Melt, Multi-Legs, and the leg ability of Desert Titan. Now, of the three models here, naturally you want to go for the shiny new one, Queen Vespa, because everyone's going to need to want to collect her for, for the sake of collection and library. But even then, Static still does have some very solid use if used correctly. And what's nice about it is the fact that you can use it either at low level or at max level, and it's still going to have more or less the exact same performance, given that it's not meant to break anything, but cut HP down to about 50% or so of, with every hit. That being said, I would honestly have to give MVP of the week to Queen Vespa naturally for a number of reasons. Behind her, I would honestly have to give the next, the second best to Poison Scorpy. Even if Melt isn't necessarily a very good ailment to make use of in current meta, legs with desert type are honestly something very openly welcomed and something you really can't ever go wrong with using anywhere. In terms of events this week, as I mentioned, it is going to be very, very light. So again, take this as another skip week to relax and recoup if you do find that none of the models are particularly appealing to you this week. However, as a way to kind of help recoup those materials, much like previous uh, models of the Seven Lucky Gods that were released, we are getting the re-release re of the daily special missions back. Now, simply put, these are very easy to accomplish. They're just little extra challenges you can, ac you can accomplish um, next to your daily missions and your milestones. But with these, you have an opportunity to collect more ruby shards and even some uh, permanent pool gacha tickets on top of that. So again, even if it isn't a very busy week, some of these are honestly very easy to complete, such as uh, battle in, in PvP a couple times, perform a fierce battle, level up a part, paint a part, change your BGM, all very easy things, honestly. So there really isn't any reason that you shouldn't go after these, especially since a lot of features were made a lot easier to accomplish, and this is just something as a way to help recoup those lost materials after a very busy uh, January and 3rd anniversary. In addition to the daily challenges, we do also have Marathon Survival coming back for another run. This time we get to challenge the War God of the Seven Lucky himself in a new set of challenges and earn even more rewards. Now for those who are unaware of what Marathon Survival is, it is a very unique event with some very interesting modifiers. When going into a fight, upon victory, the 12 parts you used, 4 per bot, team of 3, are now added to a banned list which means that you are not allowed to use those parts again until you can reach a checkpoint or if you can reset the part via an in-game mechanic. When, once you make it to a checkpoint, all of your banned parts and your banned list will be reset, allowing you to use them again until the next checkpoint. So this is more of a test to see um, if you've been paying attention to raising other things besides your main set of parts, just and also a test to see how flexible you are with using things that you normally don't use on a regular basis. So even if so this is honestly something very good to have and make sure you have some backup parts raised just for the sake of having them on hand. Because once you use up all your good parts, you're kind of left with the with the best of the rest and whatever you happen to have raised at the time. Rookies, this might be a little bit of a challenge for you, but luckily for you all of the marathon survivals are opened when when this event comes around. So even if you can't challenge this one directly, there are, st there are still a lot of very easily conquered ones right down on the list that you can do instead for equally as nice and lucrative rewards. Now in terms of other things as well, just a couple announcements from me personally. Just a friendly reminder that we are now halfway through the event, through the um, Project Ryzen Beetle Ori meta event right now. Uh, for those that are unaware or don't know, we are hosting our own custom meta art competition. Where, play, where members can submit their own custom designs and talk about it and kind of give them the spotlight on what they think would make a really good bot. Prizes include a lot of, uh, pri there are a lot of cash prizes to be earned for top spots, honorable mentions, and there really are no rules this time around aside from, of course, you know, keep it family friendly, keep it clean, um, and just have fun. So that is currently ongoing right now. The link to the Discord to participate will be in the comments below if you'd like to join or even just ask about it. Or, if you find yourself not really the artsy type and just want to join and watch, you're more than happy to do that too. Looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of art designs, and I really want to highlight them on my channel, maybe closer to the end 
uh, once the event closes. So I want to see a lot. I'm issuing that as a challenge. You have plenty of submissions, up to three each per person. So don't disappoint me, guys. I want to see a lot of art. I want to spend a long episode just talking about them and maybe even bringing a guest host with me to do so. In addition to the Ori Meta competition, this is actually something I did just recently, as in this last Sunday. But I did come to realize that my beginner's guide for Metarot S I wrote uh, back about three years ago, actually, if I recall correctly, is uh, <laughs> horribly out of date. So I opted to spend all of Sunday rewriting the beginner's guide from the ground up. So that is now also publicly available in the Google Docs link, also in the comments below, for your convenience to find and look at for those that want to learn the game and play it anew, or join the series anew, or even if anyone just needs a brushing up on what menus do what. Everything's been written and documented, so that's going to be your best friend and your handy cheat sheet for any of you Western folks that want to get in and join on the action. And for, the, and for my Western friends that do want to join the game and play, my channel is always going to be your best friend as well for breaking down the highlights and the breakdowns on the bots to tell you what's good and what's not. On the community front, we are still always looking for translators to assist us with translation projects, such as the Metarot 3 tra uh, translation project, as well as the my, my friends also officially starting to decompile Metarot 4. So progress has been made, Metarot 3 has been fully translated in English up to Chapter 1 and the battle menus, so there is still lots to translate on that if you'd like to give a hand. Now in terms of the reloaded manga, at last count, that is officially reached its the end as of this week with Chapter 250. So while it is sad to see yet another Metarot manga uh, reach its end, this does mean that we will officially have compiled all the chapters and are just in need of translators and cleaners that can get the chapters cleaned up and, re and ready to be read in an English format. So if you'd like to assist with either of these endeavors, we would love to have you and, ass and, and assist with that. Feel free to reach out to me or join us in our Discord below, and we can get you up to speed with the right people to get in touch with to fill you in on what has been done and what still needs done up to this point. With the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, honestly, I never have any issues finding fun art to highlight. My real difficulty is just finding what pieces to highlight, as given my screen, I can usually only limit it to about two or three at best. But these particular pieces were very fun to find. This first one here by Twitter user I like Robot one who did a very nice doodle of uh, Kreutz Bison, the new, the new uh, hybrid beetle type that was debuted a couple weeks ago as part of Cross Messiah's line. And then this Twitter user here, MirokuT5000, I do highlight here every once in a while as well with art, but they definitely blew the community away with a rather interesting submission for the Metarot fan art community, and that is a fully live 2D version of Sailor Multi that can be used for VTube Studio as a VTuber model. Honestly, I was very, very impressed with the time and effort they put into making that work, as making live 2D models and rigging them is certainly no easy feat. So, wonderful work to the both of you. If you'd like to see more art in your feed of Metarot and robots in general, definitely give both of them a follow. But, with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything this week um, here on the MNN. Again, it's going to be a relatively light week in terms of new content, um, aside from maybe a couple new mini-events that you can do to recoup resources. And, as I said, if you find that none of the, set, the five new models, the five models coming out this week appeal to you, I just say kind of take it as a skip we can save your resources. That being said, if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page, um, and the Metabots Forever community on there. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below, where you can keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action. This includes any new merchandise, new, uh, new art, fan art, um, Kotobukiya kits, my weekly episodes, and so on. That's the first place you'll hear it before it goes anywhere else. You can also reach out to me personally on Twitter at Itsugamikura. If you have any questions or feedback or comments or even just want to reach out and say hello, I leave my DMs open for this very reason. So feel free to stop on in, say hi, don't be a stranger. And if you are a VTuber or a streamer that would like to collab with me or even join me on the MNN one day as a guest star, I would love nothing more than to have you. Feel free to reach out, say hello, ask around, and we can definitely coordinate that sometime in the future and get you highlighted here on the MNN, or even if I can stop by on your channel and say hello. Do also give these wonderful friends of mine a follow as well. Twitter user Yukima3, who does a lot of very nice Metarot art as well. 
Um, I've been following this person for a while, just not officially until recently, but always a wonderful artist to see in the community making a lot of wonderful work. And also this Twitter user here, Silvalion041, I highlighted a pretty fair bit of time ago, but also a very well-known artist in the Metarot community who actually has had a hand in a handful of designs currently available in Metarot S. Um, such as, I believe, Unit 5 from the EVA collab was he was in charge of, as well as um, uh, one of as one of the uh, Takanome from the from the Ghost of the Shell Part 2 collab was actually done by this folk, by this fine person here. So definitely give both of these a follow if you'd like to see more Metarot in your feed. You definitely will not be sorry. But with all that being said, once again, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you have been. Until next time, this is your host, Kura Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.